morning, everyone. This is Doug Chupieski, the CEO of HDS. We put together this quick webinar to illustrate some of the ways in which doorways has impacted operations in our housing community. We hope you enjoy it. We hope you find it informative. We will be watching in real time. So if you have any questions, just please put them in the chat and we'll get back to you. So uh, best of luck for a speedy recovery to all back to normal housing operations. And we wish all of you and your families very much health and wellness. Thank you very much. Good day, everyone. My name is Rich Wagner, and I was asked to share a few words today about how COVID-19 has affected our work lives. Here in our Wisconsin office, we are fortunate to have very little disruption. All of us in Wisconsin office have worked from home at various times and were well equipped to do so. As people started to realize that COVID-19 was going to be a factor in their work experience for quite some time, we began to get a lot of calls about using HGS when when not in the office. A common question was, how can I use HDS Win from home? For those small agencies with a single staff person, one possibility was to simply replace their desktop PC with a laptop. Then they could use that wherever they happen to be. For those with multiple users, one suggestion was to configure their file server with remote host services, which would allow the staff to connect from any PC to run this HDS Win software from anywhere. <clears throat> This type of connection uses RDP, which is a remote connectivity program, which is included in Windows. In addition to being configured to connect to the file server over the internet, this type of connectivity can be used from your personal PC to connect to your office PC. Once connected, you'd have the convenience of running everything that's installed on your office PC. So this is simply a means of remote control. This type of connectivity usually requires the skills <clears throat> of an IT person to get things configured. However, once it's configured, it's very easy to use. For, for those without access to an IT person, we often suggested that to use one of the many third-party remote control software products found on the market. There are many to choose from, and some of, of them are even free. Uh, the free ones are often a little bit more difficult to set up but there are a lot of good products that you can select from that range of cost anywhere from a little less than $100 to maybe $200 a year. These paid for versions of remote control software are usually simple to set up and often offer a little bit better security and user experience than the free versions do. Those already using our doorway software have a little bit more convenience in terms of running the software because they can run it from anywhere using any device, uh, simply needing an internet connection and a browser. Because Doorways is cloud-based rather than server-based, users don't have to connect to a specific server or a PC to use the software. They're not gonna be bound by the same restrictions of having to install some form of remote control software in order to gain access. Additionally, those that are using electronic processing and storage of information are gonna find themselves better suited to work from home then they'll still rely on cabinets full of paper files. Here at HDS, we also use a software product called Basecamp. This is used for our project management and as well as uh, internal communication. Basecamp and Ring Central online meeting software enables our team members to collaborate effectively wherever they happen to be located. All of these tools enable me to work from home very effectively. However, your needs may, may be quite different, but my point is that there's probably software out there that may help you to work more effectively from whatever location. My office space at home is simply a converted spare bedroom. When I come into the room, I simply close the door and it's if, to me, it's as if I close the door to a room at the office. I think working from home would be difficult if you're unable to have a quiet space dedicated for work. Such a space puts you into the correct frame of mind to work, focus on your work. A personal obs observation to me is that people seem to be more thoughtful these days. Uh, people are expressing genuine regard for others. It seems that COVID has brought people together in concern at a time that we're separated by social distancing. Please stay safe and do your part to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Thank you.
Hi, everybody. My name's Joe. I'm a member of the client support team here at HDS. I specialize a little bit on the accounting side, and I want to share with you some information about a project I've been working on with many of our clients the past few months that I'm proud of. Uh, back in March, when things started getting weird and businesses started closing down and jobs started drying up, um, we began to hear from our IHA connections and, and some of our clients that they were looking to extend financial support to their clients, to their home buyers and their tenants. And we got to work quickly to figure out the best solution in doorways to make that easy for them. Uh, I've worked one on one with many of our clients to build a plan that makes sense for their housing authority and for the different types of programs that they administer. And uh, I, I'm proud to say that I think we've made this process easy for many of our clients. Um, and uh, so I want to show you today uh, some of the tools and doorways that make this process as simple as possible, but as detailed as needed, and uh, then let you know how to get a hold of us if it's something you might be interested in. Okay. Uh, the most important functions in doorways to support a, a project like this are our reporting capabilities. Um, when, from the home screen and the analysis tab, we've got a report called the monthly charges report that details by each household uh, what they were charged for the month. So we're looking here at August 1st charges for the low rent program and all the tenants therein. We can identify these numbers and then we're gonna use the groups function in doorways to all at once enter uh, credit transactions to offset that charge amount, okay? So you can create a group and include uh, uh, the members that you like, whether it's by program or project, uh, depending on how big or how detailed you need to get this down to. Once you've got the members of your household in a group, you can use a one-time accounting transaction action to generate a transaction in different amounts for each group member, okay? And uh, once you get to that screen, you select the account that you want to post the credit against and uh, the amount, which you can get from our reporting. And then uh, the important thing here, which will help you set up, is we'll, we'll generate a specific adjustment type to isolate this activity. And on the demo site, I just used uh, the words rent relief COVID-19 to identify the adjustment type. If we use that type for each transaction, You'll see, uh, you'll see it pay off on the tenant ledger and then again in reporting. So once we generate this bulk transaction for each of these households, we can jump into the tenant ledger and see what it looks like there. Uh, Felicity was in our group. You can see her August 1st rent charge that was generated by the system in the amount of $450. We use the reporting to pull up that charge amount and we use the bulk transaction feature to generate this credit adjustment. You can see the adjustment type, and here's where that special naming convention comes in for this type of charge. So you can easily identify it as related to the COVID-19 project. And you get your full audit detail here, who created the transaction and when, and the little description that we entered in the transaction field. So a nice audit trail at the tenant ledger level. And then also when we get to reporting, uh, again, under the analysis tool, we're gonna look at a statement of ops report and this is using our filters, the August activity for the low rent program. You can see our opening accounts receivable balance and then all the activity for the month by transaction type uh, and then the closing balance. And we see the rent charge for the month, total activity of $1,055 for this program in August. And because we use that special adjustment type, we get all that offset activity grouped under one line, easily identifiable and we can see that we fully offset the full rent charge for this program uh, in August uh, with the identical credit amount here. So your accounting team's really gonna appreciate that uh, custom adjustment type when it comes time for reporting and for updating the general ledger. So we can help you get your, your site set up uh, with, the, with the charge type and, and help you formulate a plan for each of your different programs. Please reach out to, uh, to the Doorways support team uh, you can always get us at support at hdslabs.com. Uh, and, uh, you know, additionally, if you want to outsource the whole project, if you want to uh, let, let us here at HDS uh, handle all the clicking, and uh, then we can deliver reports, you know, showing 100% accuracy, inquire about a pro services quote. We can, we can take this off your hands and, and deliver uh, uh, the finished goods um, and free your team up to do all the hard work that I know is on their plate right now. Um, so please... Let us know how we can help. We're happy to and proud to be able to offer the support you need right now. 
we want to make your jobs easier during these hard times. We want to make sure that you can uh, focus on, on your clients and your people and give them the support that they need as well. Um, so uh, please uh, be safe out there. Be nice to each other. And let us know how we can help you out. Okay, thanks. This year has been stupid, crazy, busy, but not for normal reasons. It's um, it's all the normal stuff. I mean, we had some applications or closings, but then we have had the weirdest things come up. Some of it's COVID, some of it's normal, you know, executive director leaves, and now we're, you know, in the middle of a bunch of new staff and stuff like that. But um, it, it's been really busy. Um, and every day is some new weird thing. It's like, okay, that just happened. <laughs> So I don't, between that and all these phone calls, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but oh my God, I've never, I talk on the phone all the time. And, and again, in 10 years, I don't think I've ever been on the phone this much. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I'm I totally. feel like I'm, I'm doing a lot more talking with people than I used to. Yeah. Although I miss human connection, you know, like I don't, I don't see anybody anymore, but I'm talking to people a lot more. No, and that's the harder part. I mean, I, I did an initial, we have a client who's an initial rent up. And um, normally I would have been out there on site and doing that initial training and going through stuff. And, you know, you get all that back and forth and the face to face. And um, we did a video call, but a lot of them were calling in from their phones. I didn't have faces for everybody. And we did it over three days. But, um, and I know this is what we're going to. I mean, NAIHC is doing the same thing. They're creating these big webinars and, you know, with all the the polling to keep the audience engaged and the, the, the chat, you know, the chat feature and then also breakout rooms. And um, I understand it's necessary, but I just, I, I have a real concern about the effectiveness of the training because I think in our world, a lot of what we do is you're sitting in a room live with people and you're reading people's faces and you can engage them in ways to where not only are they talking with you, but they're talking with each other and, you know, saying, well, you know, this is what we normally do, different tribes comparing different things. It's much harder to have that level of engagement when you're when you're doing this remote stuff. I understand it's necessary. And I think a lot of people are gonna revise their travel budgets and wanna do this, but I just have concerns about how effective it's gonna be. Yeah, do you have any tips or tricks or any shortcuts or heuristics you try to employ to try to get them to absorb the information? I Probably not as much as myself. I mean, for me, that training that I did was small. So there were six people on the call on the on the meeting and um uh, i just tried to pay attention to who had what job roles and then as we were going through things i would say something like oh Haley, so if you were having this happen you know what would you do and then you know you try and spur conversations that way and it worked i know that um when i was talking with uh, i'm doing a tribal we did the tribal hud bash renewal application training for hud and the next one i have is an actual tribal HUD VASH training, and it involves myself, Linda Lee, um, Zoe LeBeau, Katie Simmons from, um, you know, Beau Simone, and uh, Bridget Course, who also works in supportive housing, and um, then Joanne from Seven Sisters is kind of acting as our moderator, and she's putting together the actual webinar, and they are incorporating all these cute little polls where it's like when you start off she has this map that pops up and you she has everybody that's on the call click on the map for where they're from and then when everybody's done you can actually see where everybody's from on the phone which was kind of cool it's pretty cool yeah it was a cool idea and it takes just a few seconds to do and then um, there's different polling questions where partway through something it's like you ask questions based on the material and everybody can answer the chat room, you have the opportunity to ask a question to the group or you can also chat privately with the moderator if you don't want them to know where the question is coming from. So having someone that, I will say having someone that can monitor the chat room while you're doing a presentation is really important because it's kind of hard. I mean, you, know, you look down at the chat room and it's like, oh, there's somebody asking a question. Now I have to look at the question. It creates a break. I'm sure as we do it more, I'll get more comfortable with it 
But yeah, um, yeah I'm not, uh, like I said, right now, it's just, it's kind of strange. It is, but we, we have found that there's more re uh, receptivity towards these type of meetings though with the tribes. You know, before it was like, no way, I'm not getting on the call, period. And uh, again, we're ours is mainly training, you know, software training. And they're like, you have to come on site, you have to come on site. And you get in this meeting room full of 40 people and you, you, know, you, you lecture. It's a classroom environment. So we are, because we're doing so many conversions, that part's been kind of a blessing because they at least jump on and they're you know not reticent to do that. I do share your concern, Robin, though, as far as you know how much how effective is the transfer of knowledge. Um, so far for us, it seems pretty good. Now our product is pretty self-teaching, so once we get them started, they go. Um, so knock on wood, you know, I hope we can keep that going because it definitely helps us scale and be able to onboard more people rapidly. Well, yeah, and it saves our clients the travel costs, and I understand right. that. We also have a lot of clients who have staff that don't like to travel, Doug, and now right. even more so, they're not gonna wanna travel. I mean, you have folks that like to travel, and then you have the folks that don't, and having the option of doing both, I think, will actually serve us well in the long term. It's just this right. adjustment period, and um, there's gonna be a role for both, the live and the doing it this way and for you guys especially where they can pull it up on their screens as you're walking through it you know and you can share screens and they can be doing it on their screens and going well what happens when I do this I, I think all that will be really beneficial. Yeah well we're hoping <clears throat> we, we've, we're putting a big focus on document management and uh, one of the things we're doing was, is, is in our tenant portal, we're, we're letting clients, you know, drop their documents in themselves. Tenants drop them in themselves so that um, you can review, anybody can review them remotely in an organized fashion. Um, so that will help a lot from a remote support perspective. Yeah, and the, the tenant has access to download and view any documents, too, that the housing authority deems to be tenant accessible. So they have control over that, too. And I think that'll it'll help with some of that communication loop, too. Keep and that, actually, that's interesting, too, Haley, because honestly, one of the things that we are constantly working with our clients on, just as an example, is the 120-day, the 90-day, the 60-day, and the 30-day right. letter saying it's time to research. It's like, guys... You got to get the form letters put into HDS. Then you got to have a system where, you know, the beginning of every month, pull up who's due for the 120, pull up who's due for the 90, get the letters out, HDS, HDS notes that you sent the letter, put notes in the note field, and that way you have documentation in the file for the tenant, um, but also for third party reviewers. If HUD comes out and says, you know, you didn't do all these research and your policy says you're going to research every year. If the staff can point to those letters in the file or even pull them up in HDS to show that they were sent out, the answer to HUD is, I've done my due diligence. We notified the tenants several times. They're now in the process of um, termination because they failed to respond. Here's all the documentation in the file. There is no non-compliance when I can show that I followed my policy and procedure. What we've seen is that we don't have good systems yet where this is being done consistently and on a regular basis. And I think it's one of the big problems that HDS solves, but we have to get the staffs trained to have a system for where they do that. Because look, late recertifications are the most non-common, are, are the most common non-compliance findings in the industry, whether it's HUD, and it doesn't need to even be Indian country. You look at the same thing with Section 8 and other um, PHA-driven programs that are not tribal. Failure to keep your paperwork current is the most common form of noncompliance. The reminder system is important. I mean, I always joke, the 120-day letter comes, tenant throws it in the garbage. The 90-day letter comes, <laughs> tenant throws it in the garbage. The 60-day letter comes, the tenant might be, yeah, maybe I should start thinking about it. The 30-day letter says, look, I sent you three other letters. You haven't responded. You now have five business days. Otherwise, we're going to have to institute termination proceedings. And this all happens before the anniversary date for that research. Uh, 
uh, what I was hoping to ask you about is uh, wanted to know um, what, what was your experience like with the virus um, and how did it affect your team? Um, what did you notice going on there? Well, uh, on the, here on our reservation, we had uh, lockdowns on the weekends, and of course we had the uh, shelter-in-place orders by the uh, tribal government. Uh, so most of my staff um, were at home on um, administrative leave, but those that were on standby for the maintenance portion, they, uh, you know, would have uh, letters for essential employees. But they would, you know, fortunately we have your your mobile work order app and they were able to use their um, iPads from home or out in the field. And so they really weren't um, stuck having to go into the office because they were allowed to take their maintenance trucks home and just respond straight from their residence. Um, but it was, uh, it was a good, good experience, good process for us because of the mobile work order app, which really helped us out a lot. I, uh, like you said, it would just let us remotely access and handle those work orders that came in. That's great to hear. Uh, I'm curious here about what effects did you see um, on your reservation? Um, were things um, coming to a halt at, at times? Um, did it affect day-to-day -day operations? Oh, absolutely. I mean, we, we were down even the tribal government, which is massive. Um, they were just down to essential personnel, which was uh, very limited. I mean, I know for us, we were down to probably out of 400 employees, we were down to about 20. Um, oh, wow. Everyone else is at uh, at home, shelter at home, and then just the the standby maintenance personnel would respond to emergency work orders only. So, um, <clears throat> but you know, we even had a lockdown on the weekends and curfews at night. So, uh, a lot of people were shelter in place and you know couldn't go anywhere. So it was, it was pretty pretty dramatic for us because we're oh, pretty yeah. gregarious and like to go out and uh, especially in the summertime we had a lot of ceremonies going on that were all shut down so you know that was kind of tough for us but you know at the same time just trying to be safe and you know fortunately for us at our housing authority we were able to um, continue to work somewhat remotely because of uh, uh, because of the applications that we had available to us you have other integrated uh, cloud applications that you use? Uh, we do. We have a financial system that we use that is also uh, cloud-based. And then, um, of course, our um, we migrated our email system back in uh, late January into um, a cloud-based uh, email system. So uh, fortunately for us, we were able to... Uh, access that through there and of course you know we have a lot of people who are out in the countryside rural areas that don't have internet access so they were able to use the, the cell phones that were issued to use the hotspot so that we could still access doorways mm -hmm. were there any other aspects of doorways that helped you weather through the effects of the virus well, absolutely. One of the things we did was we actually got involved in delivering uh, food boxes and, and sanitation items to our tenants. And we were able to go and use doorways and pull demographic reports so that we could select the populations that we wanted to target with our distribution. And so that helped us out a lot. We've actually uh, done two food box deliveries uh, wow. since um, March. Well, it's, it's nice to hear that there's a silver lining um, and that there's some good that can come out of that. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, that's that's beautiful. Um, my next question for you, my, my last one here for you, is if Doorways had a tenant portal system uh, um, where tenants could log in, see their balances, and see any relevant announcements made, um, would that be something you'd look forward to and something that you could see being very useful? Well, absolutely, you know, especially, you know, for, well, for a large percentage of our population, yes, because they actually have, um, they are in areas where they do have good connectivity to the internet, so they could go and access it. Um, some of those that are out in the more rural areas that are um, still lacking the infrastructure for internet, 
services, um, it would be um, less effective, um, mm -hmm. including some of those home buyers that are like scat out scattered sites out in the um, well away from other infrastructure. So yeah, even those folks would be even more isolated. But you know, things are changing. Um, we're slowly bringing connectivity to everybody. So, but I think yeah, absolutely anybody would like to be, for their tenant to be able to have uh, that type of interface. Awesome. Well, uh, we hope to keep being, uh, keep on bringing out uh, new additions to doorways, um, new features that will really help you be effective out in the field. Um, but thank you so much, Arnie, for your time and for your insight into this. Um, really appreciate it. Hi. I'm Haley Kilhoffer. I'm the product manager here at HDS, and I'm going to give you a quick sneak peek at the tenant portal that we're building right now. So keep an eye on your email inboxes. We'll be sending more emails regarding when this feature is going to go out, a little bit more about our integration with Stripe and next steps for you. So every client or every site is going to get a unique URL that they can give to their tenants. They're also going to get a unique access code, and I'll show you more about that in a minute. So when you give your tenant this URL, the first step that they're going to do is they're going to sign up. We confirm their identity with a household that's already in your doorway system. So they use last name, the last four of their social security number, and the access code that you will give them. The access code will be found in your doorway site under Housing Authority Setup. If this matches with a household in your doorways, then you can confirm it and they'll finish setting up their account. Once they finally get to log in, they're going to get to see a dashboard that shows them a little bit about their account, any community announcements, work orders or transaction activity. As they dive into each option in the left hand menu, they get to switch between accounts. Maybe they've lived in previous units and still owe a balance. They can see what they owe on that specific account and make a payment. We'll be integrating with Stripe to take payments. So they're gonna keep your bank information secure on their servers and they're gonna keep your tenant's bank information secure. We'll be sending you more information on the Stripe integration as we prepare to roll this feature out. Maintenance, so your tenants can view any open work orders, their work order history, or request new maintenance. They can also view documents and upload any documents that you might be waiting on them from. So I'll bounce over to Doorways and kind of show you how we're gonna handle document access. In Doorways, inside your household file, there will be a tab, there is a tab for documents and we're gonna be adding this tenant access toggle. So this toggle will basically be your okay for the tenant to see a file. If you don't want them to see something, you can easily turn it off. Then we have the community page. So the announcements section will house any messages coming from you as the housing authority to all of your tenants. And then there'll be community messages. These are messages from your tenants to each other. So you can always turn this off, but your tenants can also just post with a title and a body of the message. We're also gonna give you a lot of access to doorways configuration with this portal change you'll be able to create your own custom attributes and notifications, whereas before you had to call support for help with this. You also get a new tab for portals. And within here, you get to post your own announcements, delete any old announcements, and configure the tenant portal so it works for your housing authority. You have the power to decide whether or not the tenant can upload documents, they can post community messages, or if they can send maintenance requests and then you can enter the email that the maintenance request will be going to. And finally, we have some basic account setup. But the big difference here is contact preference. We're gonna start allowing tenants to share with you their preference on how they would like to be contacted. I hope you like the look at our tenant portal. Again, keep, a, keep an eye out on your email inboxes. We'll be sending you more information soon.